enough time that they can still do it if they didn't do it yet, but close so that <coughs> they feel motivated to do it for the meeting. Yeah, something like that. So it's like one person that has the specific role of pinging people, and that's the only role, but I think it's very important because we tend to, I don't know, I think most people tend to be bad at prioritizing and then say, yeah, this is something that will only take me two hours, and it keeps that not uh, getting put off, and then then the time when it should have been done comes and it was not done. So, like having someone mail you and asking you how is it going, do you think you will make it, is useful. So as long as they, you need to choose someone who has the right tone. Yes, that. it has to be someone with social skills, but it also has to be accepted okay. by the team yeah. that this person has this role and it's not personal, it's, it's a help for the whole functioning of the team. Yeah. So this was one idea. I think that's a good idea and I think we should propose it to the mailing list um, that we discussed it today. And uh, did you want to be that person no. that we nominate? Not really. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> at least when we did it in Argentina, it was one person that had this role and this role that is so it's as a glorified any other responsibility than pinging people. And this allowed this person to do this job very well. Uh, I think so if I take this responsibility, I can't take anything else. <laughs> and since I'm planning on taking other things, I would prefer other person to take it. Okay, so should we ask the mailing list uh, if anybody wants to do this, or do you have <coughs> do you have anyone particular in mind? I don't have someone in mind. Okay, then I think we should send an email to the list and explain this. Are there any um, questions or objections in this round? I don't think so. Okay, consensus. Maybe ask for volunteers to be sent to someone, like sent to Margaret or something, and then you can choose. Oh. It's, it's kind of hard. If someone just volunteers publicly on the list, it's hard to reply to them saying, no, you don't have the requisite session. Yeah, you, you don't have session. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe first, you should have a, a list of all the tasks so that to be distributed before you decide to take one out. The, 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 the point is that that person shouldn't have any any tasks. But no, no, but I mean that person should know which tasks they should be yeah. 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 reproducing. No, of course, but this will change with time. Yes. So for example, yeah. I don't know, the, the sponsorship brochure was something that was being done. As soon as it's finished, it's finished. So you don't need to think about it anymore. Right. And you can focus on something else. This, I, I see it as a new volunteer, someone that just arrived on the team, that you can, that, that's willing to take this role, but not someone that is already involved with the renovation will be hard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we know what to do. Um, are there any other ideas uh, from teams that they would like to discuss, like DC15 members, or even uh, questions from the outside, maybe, in preparation for this session? No. Um, just general, you know, like you, you know that the session is going on, you came here, maybe you have an agenda, maybe you want to say something. If you're here just to listen in, that's perfect. Somebody fine. checking IRC? Whether I am checking IRC. I didn't really read what the agenda is meant to be for this meeting. I just saw it. Seemed so I think yeah. we didn't okay. have any agenda. Not really. We had one in our heads somehow. But, uh, um, I have one idea I would like to resonate, just get a sort of like general feedback. Um, and that's relating to the, the food selection, the food um, um, that we cater to at DevConf. Um, and I know this is a contentious uh, issue with some people, but uh, I would like to see, I would personally like to see DevConf head more in the direction of um, having, of not defaulting to serving meat every day. So making vegetarian be more of a standard default option and then, um, you know, make meat twice a day or something like that. So it mean, seems more what? like you just <laughs> 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 I have, I have so this meat problem. <laughs> meat, meat twice per meal. <laughs> <laughs> I messed this up the entire week already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
But uh, is, is there anything that, I mean, that we can discuss this for two hours now, or we can uh, just sort of like generally raise hands and just simply say, yeah, this is something we can we could imagine doing. It's probably going to take us a couple of years to even get there, and there's going to be many flame wars. Or do you have anything against the outfit here at the start? No, I just, uh, I would completely support the idea. I think um, if it's well done, there will be no reason for a complaint first. If it's well done. Yeah. yeah it, it, People it, will always complain. It, <laughs> but yeah. It mainly depends well, on we, what we it, it would avoid what we have sometimes, like for example, cheese and wine pine, there will be some cheese, vegan cheese, but then the other people can't eat the vegan cheese because there's only a small portion. But if we think that it interests more a broader public, then it should have more vegan cheese yeah. because I am not <coughs> strictly vegan, but I'd like to eat the vegan cheese. Yeah. So this kind of situation always happens, and I think it's something, if you want to try out different things, it's that I would totally support. I would say it's, it's the best, if you want to do that, the best way is actually by not trying to make it a big discussion at all, exactly. but just saying this is the food that's being provided. Like so many things in this. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> because if you have a, fl a discussion, especially the, wor I mean the worst case is if you propose it as on ethical grounds. <laughs> yeah, or talk with Steve McIntyre about it. So, yeah. If you just say this is the food that's being provided, then yeah. whatever. I, mean, I think one thing should be that there's no checkbox uh, if you like to have vegan or non-vegan or normal food, maybe diet food, because this year I, I checked uh, vegan food because I like meat, but also like vegan, but it doesn't matter at all here. So mm, yeah. this checkbox was completely But it, it would matter a lot next year. Um, yeah, so it's it's just for the nature. Because if you have one, the one day where you have meat, you need to buy something else for those people who are not eating meat. Right. And if, if, you, if you have a day with vegetarian anyway, you don't need to care about vegetarians extra because... I, the only other thing I'd say is that for the veg <laughs> if you're only having vegetarian stuff on any particular day, it becomes much more important to, be, to allow for the fact that lots of people are just picky eatera. And so if you have something that's a nice, healthy, mixed, vegetarian meal, it may be that half the people who are the meat eaters, who are only used to eating meat and potatoes, just refuse to eat it. So yeah, then we do that 10 years in a row, and then they... <laughs> I mean, well, then I, I stop understand playing. your okay, point. Okay, I mean, stop being in that. Let's, okay, let's yes. stop discussing. Okay. I mean, this is not a local... I mean, no, it's not. team meeting, it's a long-term plan, so... Well, yeah, but if we are saying we will do it this next year, yeah. That's what's so being yeah. It's only yeah. good idea. Yeah. It will be really hard next year, by the way, because Germany is not as advanced when it comes to vegetarianism and veganism yet as uh, some other parts of this world. But, and I've talked to this uh, to the youth hostel already about this uh, in preparation. But, uh, I, you know, if I if I feel that there is a consensus or some sort of like a backup, Acceptance. which I, I feel that I can increase. I think the it's easier to do in the environment of staying in a youth hostel place and being in a city that, firstly, it fits. It's not surprising in the surroundings in a way, and it, people have other options. Yeah. I think in a some other setups, people might have been more likely to object. But yeah. but we tried the food in the youth hostel, and they did have vegetarian food also. Yeah, they can. They cater to everything so except for um, kosher. But uh, I'm trying to push them to actually be more vegetarian oriented. And anyway, we'll talk about this more. Thank you very much for the feedback. Um, then I guess we should get to the main point that that, that spawned this meeting. Um, and that well, wait, which wait. Is other people may also have ideas. That I did ask earlier. <laughs> <laughs> said it, right? I'm sorry. Okay, let's do the sponsorship thing. No, let's then, then, then I can. Yeah. Nah, let's there, one thing I'm just remembering to say, which is kind of from the some of the previous topic, but it's a general thing, really. Or not, as in, sorry, the topic before last. Um, is just about the f teams and so on in general, that it is important not, f not to keep people happy, but for the lowering the stress and amount of work needed by the people who are in this, who are from Germany or in this room, to actively reach out to and pull back in people who've been involved in previous years, which means people who've been in particular teams this year, but also maybe in the last year or two. Many years people kind of as just assume that it's those people's responsibility to get involved again if they want to, which is obviously true, but if you just take that attitude, it leaves it everything it needs to be done by a limited number of people. So even though it's annoying to have to reach out to someone and 
be very polite and say you were you ran the network team two years ago and you were interested in doing it and you were really great, maybe we can put you in charge of the network team because you're so wonderful or whatever. Um, but maybe it feels like it's much easier just to get on and do it yourself. Um, by the time it comes to DevCon, for the months leading up to it, it's really a problem if you don't have those people. So um, maybe in the same, well, it's partly something that someone in particular could take charge of, a bit like the poking people job, but also it's something everyone should think about if you're involved in a topic, just to actively be trying to get people from previous years, um, because otherwise you really have, again, you have, well, there's a problem with manpower, but also even if you have a million people in Germany, again, you want to keep them involved next year, so the year after or the year after when they're somewhere useless that doesn't have enough local volunteers, they're there. Yeah. So how do we do that? It's there's no good easy way, I think. It basically just means whoever's in any, again, someone could do it if they took it as a job to act to kind of re-recruit previous people and just looking through previous year's team lists and including me on the wiki or final reports. Um, but also it needs, in some respects, it needs to come from people working in particular areas. So say if someone's working in the networking area, they should look who's worked on networking before and try and yeah. actively ping those people. And again, it's. It's a problem about the tone because you need, like for paying people, because it's not just, an, it's not enough to say, I'm running networking now, do you want to come and be my servant? Because they will just say no. You need to be at the least in tone saying that they're going, their ideas are going to be very important and etc. Yeah. I think the, uh, I think we're, we are doing this here and there already. Yeah. Um, maybe we can do it a little more. It's also dependent on what time you're in. Oh, exactly. Um, but it's so something that's relevant to the next few months. So we are working with a sponsorship team, yeah. and uh, Norman Garcia and uh, Brian Gupta um, are pretty much on the team again. Um, and then, for instance, with, when, with regards to website and stuff, um, I'm working very hard this entire week already to uh, get Gerald and Case and, and Steve Langeshek and Petty uh, to, to be enticed to yeah. keep developing what we have exactly. this year and make it even better. But well, that's the management system, I think. Exactly, yes, but and, and possibly integrate that yeah, the yeah. website. I mean, uh, well, we'll see about about that. And then uh, talks, team, scheduling, and so on, that comes much later. But in some ways, I feel that is a given anyway, in some ways. Again, it, to be it makes sense to reach out to them quite early on, even yeah. if they're not starting working until later. Right, so one of the things that we will be discussing in DC15 over the next couple of months is taking in the um, feedback from DC14, <coughs> what they did differently, um, try to decide how, what density of talks we want and so on, and that's a good thing to get the talks again, really involved. At, at, at this, sorry, at, the, at this stage, in a way, the most important thing is just not doing anything that goes against that. Because one or two previous years, the things that happened, like people posting on the wiki their new list of teams with members only from the local team and some set of people, um, not really in any rational way, but would just be annoyed at that and say, well, I'm not going to help them then. So, so we have that for DC15. We did start a list like that. Yeah, um, but I don't think it's pin yet a cause of conflict, so. No, no, but it's, 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 it's a good point to keep in mind that we should not. I think, it, it, I think we should not publish that team. list and tell people to enter themselves, but we should uh, attract the people and then exactly. enter them. Exactly. And then suddenly they find themselves on the list. I mean, yeah, you can, uh, if it's a wiki thing, you can also just add them in advance, but you still don't know who's really doing it. There's not enough in that name to be there if they're not actually doing the work. Yeah. Okay. Are there any other issues, questions, ideas, thoughts? So there's a list with, with people with team lists and so on that can from the previous years. From from previous years. From the previous companies, yeah. Yeah. That should exist. Mm. Yeah, well, again, partly Very final fast. reports is and partly other just other stuff on the wiki. Yeah, I think the current team list is not no, no. authoritative. No, no, no. There is one for DC fortune, but there's lots of ellipses and maybe we should go a little bit with uh, these people actually were in the end to approach them. Yeah, I mean, I definitely know the video team on the wiki is, uh, is like Carl, one other person, and then my name under volunteers. And I know that there's more than three people on the video team for DC14. Like, it's just like, another volunteer saying it's literally just me. I think yeah. final reports are a good <laughs> source of information. Yeah. Well, and speaking of final reports, 
You're going to write the DEFCON 15 one this week. The DEFCON 15 one is already done. We're <laughs> 14 one. No, but uh, I, I guess uh, you may have followed this already, you may know about this already, but DDA went uh, and already created the structure and, and the MT document for the um, for the DC-14 final report, and even though that is theoretically the job of the DC-14 team to finish, we all know that this, it is really good if everyone helps, especially the next team, and it's in our main interest to do that. And uh, so I would simply like to remind everyone that it would be really cool if you could take during this conference on the way home or at home, take half an hour time and just jot together stuff, collect material, or even write an article. Sometimes that's fun, some people like doing that. Yeah, well, and Steve then. actually mentioned that today in a sign up meeting. He said, uh, all the stress has been winding down, and he urged the PC 14 people to start thinking about the final report, also coming up with ideas. I mean, that's great, but in the end, it needs somebody who writes the chapter. Right? So I don't know, maybe. We can talk to them and say, well, we would do it differently this year, but in the past years it was that uh, people contributed chapters and then they got edited by other people who did the final report. Um, and if you just have people start, okay, looking at blog posts and stuff, that's useful, but I think the real main work is writing the chapters. I think it's a very good thing DD came up with this um, primary and secondary chapter, so if the hacker team fails to come up with something, at some point we will just ship it well. And that's a good thing, but there is a couple of things, yeah. Okay, so I, I, will, I will personally see through the budget and um, accounting chapter, which seems to be one of the core chapters, and if um, somebody else um, is willing to do that. Um, I have this dream that um, at the end of the conference, we, the organizing team meets with the next organizing team for a day, and then uh, doing the final report is part of that day, and also like learning from each other and discussing what's, what went good and what went bad. It would be really useful to have at this conference because of um, the, the experimentation that we're doing. I don't know if it's going to happen this year, but uh, I think we're, we would like to plan it, actually plan it and announce it for DC-15, um, so that everybody knows already by the time they book flights that they're sort of like invited to stay a day longer. Um, which of course can be combined with perks like dinner and stuff. I mean, that's all doable, right? Um, so anyway, bottom line, final report. If you feel like you have half an hour or an hour or on the way home you would like to write something, um, talk to DDA right. or before talk to anyone about before, before you go home. Before you go home, exactly. And I hope we can make this happen. Right. Don't just start writing checklists without correcting. Yeah, talk to you. Yeah, but you can claim on the wiki, that's true. Okay. Claim in the wiki if you know you're a good candidate. Okay. Good. Other things? The sponsor thing? Yeah, the elephant in the room. Well, there's, there's <laughs> also the talk we have to give on Friday. Do we need to talk about that? Or is that under control? I mean, you and <laughs> Richie have been working very hard and. Well, we should discuss like who's going to actually go to the, well, we, I don't know, we can discuss later, we can do some let's, let's discuss later. I mean, uh, I think everybody who wants, who can be there will be there because that's all, that's one of the times when you actually get to show your face and take credit for the work that you've already done. So, isn't it? Well, also yes, but we cannot just show up. Yeah, but we've already done a lot of work and we get to present that now and so that's, uh, that's a motivation. <laughs> but yeah, it's also a it's also a promise to the future commitment. All right, then let's uh, talk briefly about the sponsorship brochure. Um, so the process, what, what happened, um, it was a little bit up and down here and there everywhere. And uh, I did have a particularly bad day in the middle of it, too, and uh, pushed things that uh, made some people angry. Um, I think that. We've talked between those people and myself enough to the to the point where um, all the bad feelings have been um, taken under control, and I also don't think that any steps have been taken which are irreversible because they are in any way public. Mm -hmm. um, the process that we are at at the moment is that we are now pretty much somewhere in the middle between DC team looking at the sponsorship for sure and DC 15 team making a final decision. Um, we 
had the sponsorship brochure more or less done and we pushed it out to the sponsors team and there were many discussions on the IRC channel. Um, not many people had a lot of time, but um, Brian provided very insightful feedback. Um, Norman Garcia provided very insightful full feedback and there was a statement <coughs> from Norman um, saying that as far as he can tell, um, this brochure is ready to be presented to DC team, which I took to mean, I don't even know what the sponsor team is exactly made up of, but Norman is certainly one of the people who has been doing a lot of work, so I trust that he, is, uh, he gave me the go ahead in this one, and I sent the brochure to DC team last week, about a week ago, um, with a request for comments, and also with, I believe I listed all of the different points that were questionable. Um, and so far, I have not seen any feedback, which obviously can also be attributed. Oh, yeah, that means consensus, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, which is ob obviously attributable to uh, to travel. Some event that's happening. And some event that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to um, not wait very much longer with this brochure because of DC 14. There was a sort of like self-imposed deadline that maybe we could hand out uh, or have them already like display the sponsorship brochure to some people at DC 14, but also FrostCon, which I thought would happen next weekend. It already happened, unfortunately. Last week, yeah. yeah. It happened last weekend, um, okay. so there was a little bit of a, of a problem there. However, I still think that we should keep up the um, pace now and, and get this finished as soon as possible, because the um, budgeting season starts for the big companies, and if we want to be in the budget that's going to be finalized in October and November, um, then we really need to get a move on. We've already had the first request from a for, from a potential platinum sponsor for the sponsorship brochure, saying that they close their budgeting at the end of August. So um, yeah, this, um, it's in the RT. Well, they they close their planning for whatever it was a special thing, but yes. Anyway, yes. I don't know. In effect, it's the same thing. There is a there is also a Debian they developer a involved. So uh, we are we are in a very good position here, um, but this is important information to know, and I think we should not wait any longer. And I don't think there's much of a reason to wait much longer if the terms that we promise in the sponsorship brochure at this point in time are something that we can reach agreement I on. Th on the specific point about that sponsor, I would say it's not vital to us to resolve all the remaining questions before that, because you could also send them a version of the brochure that removes the potentially contentious points yeah. and just send that now, today. Yeah, that's true. So, Marga and I had already talked about this, that the... Yeah, most of the contentious things have been removed. Well, I don't, I've not, I've, I can <laughs> say I've not had time to look at yeah. the most recent version. I looked yeah. at the original one, the discussions, I've not had time to... Yeah. So most of the most contentious stuff has been removed. There's still some stuff in there. And I do want to quickly resonate that in the room, um, uh, the, the individual points. Um, but we already talked about uh, that we could actually have a version one right now, or version zero, um, and then we can make two forms of changes. We can add the perks and sell them later, although that is a little bit of a problem because maybe the, the, the first sponsor wanted to do the conference dinner. Sponsors can always ask for something personalized, it's not in the brochure anyway, so it's not... I that's don't true, the that's true. They, oh. We've never done this before though. They ha um, we have done special things for individual sponsors before. Right, but we've not... We've not done different versions, but... Right. And we can also, if we modify the brochure maybe slightly, the wording, we could potentially actually increase the levels later. Obviously, we can't ever decrease them. Um, so, yes, we can we can take whatever we have and have potentially a minimal minimal version and push that out. But I don't think we're very far from um, having something that at least the people that have been working on it feel comfortable with, and hopefully other people can be persuaded of. Um, I will quickly summarize what the contents of the brochure is. It is um, based on the DC 13 brochure, and we did change a little bit the contents of the text or rephrased it a little bit, which also I think freshens it up a little. You know, the sponsors see it every year again. And uh, we did remove, for instance, Debian Day because we would like to have an open weekend on the first weekend, have the entire weekend open. But that's uh, surely to be discussed how exactly we're going to do that. Um, we are going to offer supporter bronze, silver, gold, and platinum, the standard levels, and 
there has been a little bit of a um, back and forth on how expensive they should actually be. Not, as of late, our la last proposal is that we should have um, the bronze level start at 2,500, which is a step up, euros, yeah, which is a step up, big step up from BC13. Um, then have the silver, the, br the silver level be 5,000, 10,000, and 20,000, basically uh, very nicely times two numbers, um, which all together is more or less the same as DC13. So basically, we pushed up bronze. And the reason why, in the end, I wanted to raise them up more, because I think there's potential for that, but with the perks that we offer, um, I think that maybe it's going to pan out anyway. So what are some of these perks that we offer? And what are the contentious ones? Can I uh, yeah. can you give me the, the URL? Because I have this. No, name. you can use this. Well, that, yeah. Thank you. OK, so there, there are two classes um, of perks that we would like to think about, consider. Uh, one of them is, or well, three classes, actually. One of them is um, events and, and aspects of the conference that we offer anyway and would like to give a sponsor the possibility to adopt. Um, the second class is events or um, perks that are not necessary, but we would like to give a sponsor the opportunity to, do, to give, for instance, provide coffee to all of the people if, if uh, you are a coffee geek. Um, and then there is also the idea of having um, booths for sponsors, especially when we have a, an opening weekend, allowing sponsors to present themselves, and also have something that we refer to as a job fair, which is basically removed from all the um, um, where all the people are a little bit further back into a room, allowing sponsors to actually engage in direct conversation with potential candidates um, that they would like to hire um, in combination also with a, with a job board. So the, the questions are a little bit, um, can we imagine having sponsor booths? Do we think that a job fair is an idea that could take off? And then um, the, yeah, I, I scroll down. Um, and then the additional um, sponsoring opportunities, which at the moment are uh, that we would like to offer the conference dinner, um, which is certainly the biggest expense in the, in the sense um, that we would like to offer. Hmm? It doesn't necessarily mean it's the biggest item individually, but it, anyway, carry on. No, um, room and board, obviously. But, uh, but even day trip can be more of someone. Sure. Okay. So day trip and conference uh, dinner are the first two anyway. Um, and there's a little bit of a description, like a marketing type description of why this would be a cool thing to contribute to that fund and so on. Snacks and beverages, basically the subsidy of, uh, of the bar, which I think we're going to have to do it at that uh, 15. Uh, cheese and wine party, um, the venue has agreed finally to let us do that on site, but uh, they're going to charge us 250 per person. And, uh, 50 euros. Two, that's 2 euros 50 two or 250 euros? euros. euros. Yeah, 250 euros, euros per, per person. person. Um, it's not much money. Yeah, it's not much money, but and we get glass, we get wine glasses, we get cutlery, they clean up. Good. Yeah. Okay. It's not not too bad. We would like to save that money, obviously, by cleaning up ourselves and so on, but uh, we can't do it. Don't we? <laughs> <laughs> That's Don't we? Yeah. What? Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, money is money. Money is money. Yeah, but we get if we get a sponsor to pay for that, it's really cheap. Well, if, yeah. well, yeah. yeah. Coffee. Well, if we get a sponsor to pay for everything, it's free. free. There's also the point of unless people go and have nothing. There's also there's also um, there's also coffee, which I've mentioned already, and then there are um, two new ideas that I don't think we've considered in the past. But that one of them is that um, we have lecture and meeting rooms, right? For, for instance, right now we're sitting in room 329. I think, and this is a highly contentious issue, <laughs> I think that if this room were called the Intel room. This yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, that's yeah. And, that, <laughs> and that's the Google room, and that's and so on and so forth. And, and Intel gave us two thousand dollars to do that. Yeah, I like that thinking. Though it's not enough. That's <laughs> absolutely correct. Um, but just for the sake of uh, argument, let's pick a number. Um, then that would certainly, you know, um, rub some people badly who think that this over commercializes the uh, the, the conference. And it promotes free so um, non free software possibly. It does. <laughs> All of that is absolutely true. But it does give us money and it is not really changing the feel, the, the sort of like uh, the conference content, you know. 
Anyway, that's one of the ideas. Um, there's the same idea for Dev Camp or Dev Camp Hack Days that individual companies can sponsor these days. Um, and then there, the final point is uh, something that uh, I've seen in a couple of conferences which I like very much is uh, um, lottery prizes to be given out. Um, and that is often combined with sort of like the homeroom assemblies in the morning prior to the first talk, whenever that may be. Um, you just assemble all together for 20 minutes and that is a time for the organizers to spread um, important announcements, for instance, about the day uh, cheese and wine party today. And in order to um, entice people to come to these events, uh, a price is given out to, you know, yeah, and, and it would go like this. It would be like, uh, yeah, Tiago won this prize, and then uh, Tiago wouldn't stand up, right? And then Tiago wouldn't like that very much when he later found out, oh, hi, Tiago. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then it would just go on until somebody in the room took it. And that's been tablets and laptops and everything and so on. It's, uh, this is just an idea out there whether we want this homeroom assembly and whether we could benefit from it. So, questions, comments? Well, my, my comment is um, mostly this room assignment thing. I mean, I'm very worried about this in a sense that now I see it also that, for example, you have this busy schedule thing in IRC saying next session is blah, blah, blah. And if it says next session in the internal room, then it's really in the face of everybody all the time. Um, in general, if uh, we put it somewhere in the, in the corner, then I wouldn't mind that much, but I don't think the sponsor would pay for it. Right. So um, I think anything which people really have to interact with is highly contentious. That's why we also consider uh, having these booths or the job fair really only on the open weekend and in, in, well, the place where this is and people who don't like it don't have, actually have to go there. Maybe this is already too much in the face, this is debatable. And, uh, but I'm generally thinking that once it's so visible to everybody, it, it really um, can that people not come. Yeah. We already talked with somebody who said probably somebody didn't come because there's a pet camp. And uh, that's a different yeah. issue. That's yeah. a different yeah. issue, yeah. but yeah. people are very sensitive to say, okay, total, this is not how I ran, that we ran it, I'm not coming. Okay. Yeah, one thing I would like to say is that one thing is it's a sponsor as a provider, like the, the sponsor give us money, but we are the dev comp. When, when a room has a name of a sponsor, uh, it, it's it's part of the identity of the conference. Like, I, I think it's too much. I think there's no price. It's not that it's not enough for me. It has no price because DevConf is not Intel or Google or HP. I know they are providing the resources, but it's something I wouldn't put, I, I wouldn't offer. Well, it's, as DevCom has something that is different from other technical conferences. Okay. Don't the rooms already have names? The rooms have names. Yeah. City names. Yeah. And so I mean, then you could just tag on another name. Yeah. So yeah, it would be like Berlin. But this different Intel. Intel. Sponsored or by Intel, but maybe that doesn't have to go up on the IRC. Is, is there, is there are there arguments from people here um, for this, like that we could make it happen? I mean. I think considering what's been said and also considering what he just said is kind of what I was thinking, or maybe it was you, I'm sorry. Um, I was looking at my phone. Um, I think that there is kind of a middle ground that can be found, because I mean, I definitely agree that like the identity of Debian and like, or DebConf and like the like, the, how we're different than other conventions or whatever is, 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 a, is worth a worthwhile thing to consider, but I also think that, you know, corporate sponsorship is nice the long-term growth of our conference. Right. As, as much as we dislike the possibility of becoming intertwined with you know, capitalistic <laughs> groups, it's something worth considering for long-term growth. But I think having you know, the, I'm saying the only small Germany city I can, I know, the Freiburg Room, you know, sponsored by Intel, and in the IRC it says, coming up in 10 minutes in the Freiburg Room is blah, blah, blah. And it just says sponsored by Intel somewhere in the room. I feel like that's something that a sponsor would be willing to pay for, and also doesn't, you know, shove it in your face, like because 
it already says, literally says Intel right there. If it just had the words in black text sponsored, or this room sponsored by above it, right, it would but be. How do you do it if Intel is the um, platinum sponsor that we promised to put yeah. in all the banners, and yeah. then um, do my the consulting door. company decides to sponsor no, the room? No, you just have a different sign that says this room sponsored by. I was just, I was just saying you can't. Not Intel. on IRC. So the bot should not. I mean, mention the sponsor. Anyway, yeah. my worry on these yeah. things is that there's much, there's much higher level on the perks in general. That mm -hmm. we have, we have actually tried all these. Well, not all these specific ones. But we have tried most of these similar things to most of these in the past. Not the rooms, but trying to get people to sponsor particular events and so on. There's two things. One is that they're most of the time the sponsors are not have not really responded that much on them. So there's a day. And the other aspect though is that people have had problems in designing a way to make it work that doesn't make it much easier to get a high profile by paying a small amount of money for a particular event than by giving us money we can actually spend on the core things. Paying, say, I mean, so, for example, the cheese and wine thing, say, if you want some to allow them to sponsor that, you basically need to make it, they're not just paying for the cheese and wine, but they actually pay 20 times the price or something. Yeah, sure. So that you get enough money to actually cover the core cost of combination of food and so on. Um, the danger then is that it's not an interesting opportunity to them to... No, price, pricing is going to be really hard. There's so no question the question is at the moment we actually have had... We have problems already to negotiate sensibly with the sponsors and to get those conversations to happen. I don't really see that we have at the moment the manpower and experienced salespeople to push some push sponsors to do these things in addition to their current levels. I think in principle, if you had expert salespeople, you can do that. You get them to sign up to some level and on top you say, why don't you also sponsor this and keep on phoning them up every week until they agree. Um, that's what you need to do. I mean, we had in the past some, when we had a much smaller team, we had um, Andreas actually did some of this and he was literally phoning people up every day until they said, yes, yes, I'll sponsor you, fine. <laughs> Um, but well, most people in Debian are not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was not, are not really willing to, to behave that way. And we don't have, at the, and at the moment we have a shortage of people to do it. So uh, the problem is at the moment we, we do get enough money by doing the kind of simple thing. So we just make it a simple decision for them. What level are you taking? We get an answer back and we eventually write an invoice and we eventually realize we've not got the money and so on. If we make this much more complicated, Firstly, designing it actually should really need someone with more experience than most of us have on this kind of stuff. Um, you mean the prices? Yeah, to actually get it right. Um, and then secondly, it needs a genuine sales effort and discussions, not just sending a brochure and waiting for them to respond. I completely agree with both of these points. Um, the design as, as I envision it at the moment is that there is always a fallback. If we don't sell any of these perks, because the sponsors chose to stay with the simple levels that they know from the last year, which don't change very much, then as long as we get enough money, we're just going to pay for them ourselves. But the danger is the other way around, that the, the money just comes for the, these perks and we don't get the basic money. I don't know how, again... Oh, the, because the, the perks are only available to sponsors at levels. Yeah, it, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. If that, yeah. if you're Again, it depends how you design it. We have had, we have tried to design stuff before, and we we have we have tried to sell these parks with limited success and so on. We have had particular events sponsored by sponsors before. That is a, so the general principle is not something is something the team has already accepted to have a particular party sponsored by someone or whatever. That is actually something we have done before. It's not a it shouldn't be contentious because it's already existing practice. Mm -hmm. I'm the just question is the reality. The question is here: If you're trying to push this as a big aspect, which it sounded like, then it's just a bit dangerous in relation to our availability of manpower and our experience actually getting it right. I just have a worry that we will make some. We won't quite realize the implications correctly until we realize we've only got half the money. Because actually, although they all paid for a park, they went in at one level below and to pay for a park. So yeah, but then the park was paid for. It, it depends. Yeah, but the, the main costs are food, accommodation, and travel. OK. So right. Much, but, much, hugely larger instance, than the park. For instance, we're, if we're, we're talking about a gold sponsor at 10,000 who decides to go 5,000 silver plus conference dinner 
then we get 5,000 plus the entire organization of the conference dinner, so that we don't actually have to worry about the conference dinner. We can take that out of the budget, basically. Again, I don't, in principle, disagree with selling these. I just think it's it needs a lot of time and thought to exactly get to get those right and to be considering what, again, basically one of the thought experiments that needs to be done is what if every sponsor goes one level below and pays for a small perk on top. Yeah. There, are, there are not that many perks. There are not that many perks. Well, so yeah, just one, one question the there course, because yeah. um, maybe, you know, when, when we last did it, um, the sponsors paid for events, did we how much? 20 times you just said? Um, well, no, but previously we have not done that properly. I mean, right. we have not done it correctly, in fact, for this stuff. In all, for, there's a lot of, for most of the specific stuff at the moment, we've basically just let them pay the, um, the price, which doesn't make well, sense at all. We thought about, like, twice at least. I mean, 20, I think that's quite... Yeah. Well, but it depends on it depends if the cheese and wine say two fifty per person. Yeah, it's 1,000. Yeah, but it's the real cost of the cheese and wine, like the... The exposure the cost the is many thousands. In the cheese and wine, yeah, that's well, not. But yeah, not that, twenty. That thousand. twenty was. I don't know, but it you was. You said twenty, but yeah. I, yeah, um, I'd say maybe five or whatever. Yeah, it's hard done. to come up. And it depends how the exposure is. It's a very difficult question. We can. There's a fundraising law for it. I said it. twenty yeah. times because it's um, two fifty times two two euros fifty times four hundred people. That was the point. So well, it's okay. 1,000 people. Yeah, it was. Anyway, I'm assuming 250 people or something. I would like to. We we have uh, at least I am uh, Connie who um, who has experience in uh, with Frostcon sponsorship. And I, yeah, when I say experience in that, I really mean someone who's worked commercially in the area. I think of Connie fundraising. Is I don't know. That, I don't she's know a marketing that. person and she does fundraising. Um, and we've talked about this, and I think the important consideration is that. Um, if we come up with a, s a system by which we minimize the risk that we're going to get less money than we would have, yeah. um, and if we ensure that the core conference, with all the things that we expect from it, including conference dinner, day trip, and cheese and wine party, um, and subsidized bar, and, <laughs> and so on and so forth, um, if we can come up with that, then I firmly believe we should try it. But how do you know that? By th that's a thought experiment, and I I think that if we if we are smart about it, um, we can put this in place, and possibly make mistakes for DC15, as long as they are not going to threaten the core conference. So what is the I aim there as well? Yeah. Yeah. What, what is the aim? Because at the moment we get enough money to pay for that con. Yeah. <laughs> the the aim is uh, to be able to fly more people to DevCon to um, offer more at DevCon. Well, this year we had a surplus of quite a few thousands. That's because our bursaries team started work seven weeks before the conference. Yes, so if we raise the same amount of money, except we actually start earlier so we get a bit more, yeah. and we run bursaries and other things better, yeah. we already have enough to fly extra. Sure. Excuse sure. me, but what, I don't, the, what the have you been saying as the extra wouldn't be flying more people? No, like but the day trip, conference dinner, like the other points that you mentioned, like so the thousand. idea is to get more money. So and yeah, and you but all, don't you worry, we can spend it. <laughs> sold, <laughs> but I mean, what is going to be sold? It's, it's not do, really do we what need this extra money uh, in exchange of. Well, the question is, is it actually getting more? It's not, it's not clear we get more money from it. But so even if, if we is, get is it worth it to have this? Is it worth it? The the value of this explosion is, is worth it? What are we going to get a, a huge or a perfect co uh, conference dinner or a day trip? I, I'm not sure if... I, I see your point and I think that the, the... but I'm probably sure that everyone in this room agrees that there comes a point um, at which you sold out too much, right? And that is incredibly difficult to find and everybody will disagree on where exactly that point is. But I think we all agree that there comes a point, or there is a point at some point in time, where the conference has sold its soul, right? And I think that we, we are, I personally think we are not at that point and not close to that point. I think there is potential of going a little bit more, giving a little bit more exposure to people in certain ways, and in return getting more money. And that money, how we use it, whether we use it for additional travel, whether we use it for additional offerings at the conference, whether we put it 
into a fund such that we already have all the money for DC-16 right now and can do the sponsorship work for DC-17 during DC-16. These are all possibilities that I think Come we in. can then worry about as long okay, as we so don't we sell the soul. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. It was also late for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> 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 